In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. My name is Father Philip Smith of the Kent Estuary Catholic Churches, and I'm going to give a homily on the fourth Sunday of Lent, Year A, in the Catholic cycle. It's Mothering Sunday, so of course, forefront in our minds will be uh, mothers, whether living in this world sense or going ahead to live with the Lord. We remember the love and care that they poured out for us. We remember with deep gratitude, whether they're alive or dead. Referring then to the readings of today, the readings of today <clears throat> sort of take up two themes. The first reading and the psalm take up uh, the uh, theme of the Messiah, the Saviour, fulfilled in Jesus, is going to be like the shepherd kings of old who shepherd their people with great care, defending them, guiding them. And it's complemented, of course, uh, by the shepherd psalm, the Lord's my shepherd. And perhaps we could note at this point a connection point with the other second half, the second reading and the gospel about enlightenment, enlightenment in faith. Uh, because the centre of the shepherd psalm says that the Lord will lead us in any valleys of darkness. And we think of mental darkness, confusion, moral confusion, the sort of things that we see all around today. So God is a leader in any moral confusion or any other spiritual confusion in our life. Now, the second uh, uh, reading uh, is where we get the light theme. The light theme. Uh, you were darkness once, but you are light in the Lord. Um, I, I'm, ju I'm just being visited by somebody from our Holy Communion programme for the little ones. Uh, our presbyteries today, of course, are multi-use places. And there's a constant uh, toing and froing in our presbyteries as they are used for business, pastoral, uh, prayer groups and all the rest of it and sometimes children's liturgies and the like. Um, so the second reading I, I referred to is about uh, now you are light in the Lord, be children of light. And the uh, th main reading of the day of course is the gospel and it's a long gospel about our Lord giving sight to a blind man, but also at the same time giving him insight, internal sight, so that, um, so that he could come to faith in Jesus. We'll touch on those points in the short message that I'm going to give. Now, uh, we hear how the blind man came to faith through an encounter with Jesus. And it's got lessons for us. Jesus is the light of the world. He comes to enlighten the blind man with faith. Jesus released him from his physical blindness, of course. It was a great sign that God is the God who's going to enlighten people. Uh, then he was given an inner spiritual vision as his physical vision was restored. And let's go through what is stated, what happened to the blind man, and learn from the encounter with Jesus. I think the first thing that I would like you to remember is that Jesus saw the blind man and stopped. He was the one who stopped by him before the blind man could see him. He too stops at our side even though we don't see Jesus. He's always present for us, waiting for our response. 
Secondly, Jesus prepared a medicinal paste and healed his eyes. In other words, Jesus wants to heal our blindness to his presence. He wants us to know his presence. When we're talking about sight, of course, here, we're talking about spiritual sight, insight, the understanding that God is with me, a personal God walking with me through my life. Now, the blind man came to faith slowly. And that's another lesson. Our faith can take many years to develop. Faith development is a lifetime job. We've got to develop it according to our development throughout life. It's no use saying, oh, I've got the faith of a little child. No good these days. You'll be shot down. People will laugh at it. And you'll doubt yourself. Yes, we have a childlike faith, but not the faith of a little child. Childlike means direct. So, let's remember, we must always be learning if we call ourselves followers of Christ, Christians. He points us out, points out further things for us to know if we follow him. It's a never-ending, as it were, exciting treasure trail. Um, now, the blind man's faith is brought to fruition when he's challenged to speak about Jesus. Very important point. We're not very good as Catholics of speaking about our relationship with God or our faith generally. But this is one of the main ways by which it's rooted deep in us when we speak about it. That is why our parishes encourage us to go on a faith development program every year, for example. We deepen each other's faith by our witness to each other. People don't realise what we have in our experience that may be of immense value, that another person may be waiting to hear in our relationship with God or the other or the unexplainable in our life, the mystery. Now, his neighbours, uh, the neighbours of the blind man after he'd been cured, ask him how he came to see again. And he says this, at this stage of his faith development, he says, Jesus the man anointed my eyes and I could see. He saw the man, he didn't see God, but he acknowledged his presence in his life. That's a big dividing line. When you realise God, the other with a big O, uh, has touched your life. And so many people, when they come to think of it, recognise that God has touched their lives, even though they did not understand it. Of course, many people go out to God to ask him help in trouble. But he's God out there. He's not God with me. He's, uh, you know, a universal trouble uh, shooter, as it were. This is a start, of course, but such faith is immature. There's little personal relationship with God. Then the next stage was that he met harsh treatment from the Pharisees who say Jesus is a sinner. And the blind man is driven to respond that Jesus, in his estimation, is a prophet. In other words, a man inspired inspired by God, with God's message in him. Now that's a great jump, a development. Jesus is not God, of course, but inspired by God. And that's as a result of being, as it were, verbally attacked. Um, his faith is maturing. Um, He even, by the way, lectures the Pharisees, saying, how can a man who does such a good thing as a healing miracle, healing the blind, be bad? How can good and bad mix together? A genuine theological question. And um, so, you know, he's driven to think further in his um, difficult encounter with the Pharisees about his encounter with Jesus. And um, and he defends Jesus. Yes, real maturing of faith. And he's driven away. 
people become hostile to him for sticking up for Jesus. But then he meets Jesus again after testifying to him. He now speaks to Jesus quite naturally and personally as a disciple, one who knows Jesus and who is following Jesus. His inner sight is now cleared up. He recognises in Jesus the man Jesus and the God Jesus. He said to Jesus, Lord, I believe and worshipped him. Now he's now a disciple who has full vision, inner vision. He's travelled far in his understanding, but Jesus was the first to encounter him in his blindness. From that encounter, he came to find Jesus the God. We too travel the same journey as Christians. We're called Christians because we encounter and follow Christ. That's the meaning of Christian, of course. It doesn't mean you're a nice person. It should the encounter with Christ should result in your being a nice person, evidence of it. But it doesn't mean you're Christian. There are just people, and I've met so many just people who are thoughtfully and honourably atheistic. No, Christians, people motivated by their encounter with Christ. Uh, Note, Jesus was the first to encounter the blind man in his blindness. From that encounter, he came to find Jesus, the God, in response. We too travel the same journey. Sometimes it takes a lifetime to meet Jesus as a living presence in our lives. And it's such joy when it happens. It completely revolutionises your faith and the whole view you have of the world around you. That's what Jesus promises for each one of us, if only we would take up the offer. And from there, the blind man, on meeting him, came to acknowledge Jesus as God, the final answer to our lives. We may start our prayer in response, because we always respond to the scriptures, of course, with something like this, Lord, I know that you're present in my life, yet I often pay little heed to you. And then we may follow the ancient prayer by Bishop Richard of Chichester, I think in the 1200s, that lovely prayer. Day by day, O Lord, help me to see you more clearly, to love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. God bless you and keep you. Happy Mother's Day.